Some games we play because we love. Some games we don't play because we hate. And some games are just so bad, they're good. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 games so awful, they're actually good. Number 10, we have South Park Nintendo 64. Do you remember when Acclaim made a South Park game in 1998? Now you might have played this game thinking it was good. I did. There weren't really a lot of first-person shooters at the time, and it was a South Park game where they talked. This was obviously over 20 years ago, though, and I don't think I was old enough to understand some of the flaws of this game. It's kind of really weird that it was a first-person shooter at all. I mean, it's funny you're throwing urine snowballs at turkeys, but what? Also, the turkeys are not a good enemy. They're not smart. The AI is terrible in this game. There's no stakes. And, well, let's just go ahead and say, like, it was before it was possible to make a game that actually looked like South Park, unless you made, like, a 2D game, and they were like, no, we're making a first-person shooter. And, like I said, it was a Nintendo 64 game, so it was on a cartridge, so it had very limited storage, so there wasn't a lot of voice acting, and yet you heard voices talking very often, so, as you might be able to expect, it was pretty repetitive. If you watch Matt Stone and Trey Parker talk about the Fractured But Whole game, they did not love the first attempts at South Park games, and they decided that they basically had to be involved with it, otherwise it was going to be bad. But it did have the effect of being so bad, like, everything was kind of lazy and weird in a way that it was super endearing and fun, even though it maybe wasn't good. Number 9 is Star Wars Masters of Tereskasi, if I'm saying that correct. Like, do you remember when there was so many Star Wars games you didn't know what to do? And they were all like, yeah, let's touch on that expanded universe stuff. There were Star Wars platformers, Star Wars racing games, and this was a Star Wars fighting game. On paper, that sounds amazing. And in truth, back in the day, I remember getting a demo of this game and thinking it was cool as hell. But when you go back to it, it's like, hmm, maybe I didn't really know what a good fighting game was. Maybe I kind of just thought the lightsabers were really cool to have in a fighting game. Like, it is one of the slowest fighting games. It was slow to play, and if you watch it, ooh, is it slow to watch. Go and look at some videos of this game. It is yikes. Every single aspect of this game is super sluggish, from attacking to blocking to especially the movement. Oh my god. You know how Jedi are fast? Not in Star Wars Masters of Tereskasi. Like, it had really good graphics, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that. And had Mara Jade Skywalker as an unlockable character. Is the core gameplay quote-unquote good? Nah, not really. But I mean, the lightsabers look awesome, and again, Mary Jade Skywalker, who is now rendered nothing by the entire Star Wars canon, is a playable character in this game. Number eight is Shaq Fu. What do I need to say about Shaq Fu? Okay, okay, okay. So Shaq liked Mortal Kombat, right? And like got in touch with people and they wanted to make a game with him. So they made Shaq Fu, which is Shaquille O'Neal finding himself in a dojo and forget basketball, he has to save a kid from an evil mummy in a fighting tournament. Yeah, you know, what basketball stars normally do. This game was bad. And when people say like, is this game as bad as people say, yeah, uh-huh. The controls were not just bad, but like awkward. Like you don't want to describe controls as awkward, but they were awkward. Clunky and strange and didn't do what you thought they would do. They didn't really respond like the game it drew inspiration from Mortal Kombat at all. And everybody was really small. Like, I mean, on the screen, they were tiny. It was more like a beat-em-up than a fighting game, because at that point, again, Mortal Kombat kind of created the expectation of larger fighters on the screen. And in every aspect, it's a simplistic, uninspired, awkward fighting game that sometimes looked kind of good, but on the whole is just so ridiculous and outlandish. And when you play it, that's what's good about it. It's, it's not the game, it's the fact that it's a game. It shouldn't be. In every single moment of the game, you're thinking, wow, this should not be. And oddly enough, that makes it fun. Number seven is Sonic 2006. I don't know if we can detail every reason why Sonic 2006 is bad but good here, but let's start with the fact that he's basically in love with a human woman. I'm not sure how to say it otherwise, because every single aspect of the story basically points us towards them being in a relationship. I, they never actually explicitly say anything like that, but I mean, and this was a year before B-Movie. You can't even say they were like copying B-Movie, the weird like animal human relationship. Oh yeah, and the controls for the game and the level design and the 
character models and the graphics and the story and the everything. Just nothing about this game is good. It's so bad. And it's not even, like, complete. Like, the finished product is not even vaguely a finished product. Sure, it has all the content in it, but it is perhaps one of the buggiest messes that has ever been constructed and released to the public. At least by a studio that has the means not to do that. Oh, and the voice acting is laughably bad, so as you can't get through the poorly constructed levels because they're not just poorly constructed, they're also coded badly, and nothing works. I mean, I don't, I just, I don't know what Sega was thinking, and that makes me love it. It's genuinely like playing some sort of proof of concept, where like, they got like people in the office to do the voices because they knew that they'd have to change it eventually. And like, they obviously are very early in the production process because nothing works right. And yet this is the state that they plugged all of the content into and burnt it to a bunch of discs and sold it to people for $60. It's amazing. Number six is Night Trap. Ah, good old Night Trap. I'm sure basically everybody who was alive during the 1990s is somehow aware of this, either from playing it or the re-release that was done a while back. It's probably one of the most cheesy and campy games ever, and that's the reason why it's so bad it's good. It's not well acted, it's not well written. You're a member of a fictional police force that's watching live surveillance footage of a house, and you have to protect the house guests from vampires that look like ninjas. I don't know what to say to you. That's the game. It's really weird. And it was the subject of a United States congressional hearing about violence in video games, too. Because, you know, ninja vampires are the worst thing I can think of. Senators claimed that Night Trap was violent, promoted aggression towards women, and could be used alongside Mortal Kombat as examples of violence in video games. Now, sure, Mortal Kombat was pretty violent, but Night Trap is dumb. It's silly looking. It has no real violence in it. Nothing that looks realistic, even by Mortal Kombat standards, has no nudity. And maybe it doesn't have the best attitude towards women, but I'm not so sure that it really deserved attention at all. Nowadays, things like Grand Theft Auto and still Mortal Kombat are way more violent than Night Trap was. Weirdly enough, Night Trap kind of had a hand in getting the ESRB created. So while the game itself is goofy as hell, it actually did have a pretty big part in video game history. Number five is Garfield Kart. I'm just gonna repeat that name, Garfield Kart. Garfield Kart isn't gonna go down in history as one of the greats, let's say. Or maybe even go down in history at all. It's so bad. It's terribly optimized. It runs like a big piece of dog crap. And let's say you were to go ahead and make the frame rate acceptable and stop the crashes. Uh, the controller uh, support, nah. I don't know, maybe you can tell from my tone here that it's just like, this is a game. I don't know, if you've ever played this, you know that it's not really as bad as people who think that Nintendo should be the only company making cart games thinks, but it's bad. I think that though, I would say it is bad. At least it isn't really trying to say that it's something different. Like Garfield Kart, that's the description of the game. You get it, right? That's it. Everything you expect when I say the words Garfield Kart, that's it. And for whatever reason, that kind of makes it better. I mean, over time, some bugs that reviews talked about were fixed. So if you're wanting to get into Garfield Kart, it's a better experience now. It's got a multiplayer beta, but I mean, it's less than a dollar, so I don't really know what you have to lose. Like I said, it's Garfield Kart, and you know exactly what that is from the words Garfield and Kart. Number four is 50 Cent Blood on the Sand, and yes, you say it, 50 Cent, not 50 Cent. It is actually the sequel to 50 Cent Bulletproof. Yes, there are two games starring 50. Ah, and Bulletproof was a little better than the sequel, to be completely honest. It was kind of grounded in reality a bit. It was about Fiddy trying to get revenge on the hitmen that tried to take him out. If you recall, Fiddy Scent has actually been shot in the chest. Blood on the Sand, on the other hand, mmm. A promoter in the Middle East who hired Fiddy Scent to do a show refuses to pay him, but after being threatened, offers a skull covered in diamonds. That skull is stolen by terrorists, and Fiddy Scent and G Unit have to get it back, which. I mean, I don't know how that's what you come up with after kind of a revenge fantasy about being shot in the chest for real. 
I mean, the game itself actually isn't terrible as far as controls. It's a fairly solid Gears of War type cover shooter, but it is absurd. Uh, it is that like there is no excuse for that story to exist. It just there isn't one. It's one of those games where you're just like happy something so goofy can exist and even happier that it's not the worst thing you've ever played controls wise. But every other aspect of it is just silly. It functions as a parody of itself and is enjoyable for that reason. Number three is Rogue Warrior. Like, let's start off saying this game is kind of mediocre. It's a really generic FPS. It has got a silly story and the gameplay is eh. It's kind of boring. It's uninspired. I don't know that I would say it's the worst thing ever, but I would say that it's the most unremarkable games I've possibly ever seen. I would call it bad, but not the worst. So why is it even interesting at all? Well, let's ask Mr. Mickey Rourke, voice of the player character. I do not know whose idea it was to make, of all people, Mickey Rourke throw around cheesy Duke Nukem style one-liners, but every 30 seconds you get that. And the writer apparently just learned curse words because they were like, ha ah, ha ha, gonna bring in the cursing. Like every other word is a curse word and sometimes like it's mainly curse words. And yes, it is actually that bad. And it's like, I don't have a problem with curse words. I almost think that like this person just really wanted to hear Mickey Rourke curse a lot. This game is also apparently based on a book that a real Marine wrote about his own life and I need to read that book. Like I haven't thought about this game in years and it was during the course of this that I found out it was about a book and I just want to read that book desperately at the moment. Number two is Deadly Premonition which is one of the trickier games on this list. It has a cult following. It's basically because it's a really quirky game. It's a horror detective adventure game from the PS3, Xbox 360 era. And I think the people that like it know that it's really like kind of not good. And they kind of embrace it because it's ultra cheesy, like beyond. The game kind of doesn't embrace it. So one minute there's a sort of grim murder investigation and then the next there's like wild pop culture references, cringy dialogue and jazz saxophones. It's like if a Japanese developer tried to make a Twin Peaks game, but just kinda. Not like really fully embrace everything the show's about, but aesthetically embrace what the show's about. Also, the control sound and graphics are obviously low budget and not the biggest priority of the developers, I guess. It's a rough game with some pretty bad controls. There are things about this game that make literally no sense at all too. And like, the thing is, it's so weird and goofy and I don't want to insult anybody, but it feels like one of those so bad it's amazing masterpiece type games. And finally, number one, Big Rigs Over the Road. So when you look at this game, you're playing as a truck and there are very few times that you play as a truck in a racing game. This is one of those times. Also, the physics are very strange. You act in some ways kind of like you're glued to the ground. There's a few ways that you can crash, but very few. I don't know, you may overall just kind of hear a, somewhat of a hesitance in my voice. It's because although I've played this game, this is a game that defies explanation. We are including footage of it, but it cannot properly attribute the feel of the controls, how absolutely numb the AI is. It says it's a racing game. It's, mm, I mean, there is technically a race going on, but you're not really racing someone or something or even some code. You're really not doing that. This is, I mean, borderline not a game, but in the mask of being a game, like it looks like a game. If you weren't watching a video for more than, a, you know, maybe 30 seconds of it, you would be under the impression that you're looking at a truck driving game. And if you manage to complete the race, you're met with the message that you're a winner, not you're a winner, you're a winner. And let's be clear, like all of these things add up to, depending on your perspective, the worst game ever, as many reviewers called it, or the most amusing thing that you've ever seen in your entire life, if you play it with some friends. 
I don't really mean play it with some friends. You can't really do that. It's a single player game. What games in your opinion are so bad, but you can't help but love them? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. And if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. And the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.